expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free French ebook before it's gone. Today's topic is how to speak more of your target language, specificity, and can do checklists. How much of your target language can you speak right now? If your answer is not much, there is a way to speak more, even if you're learning on your own. In this episode, you'll discover one, how specific goals can get you speaking more, and two, how you can apply this learning tactic with our learning program or any other resource. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Going Sightseeing Conversation Cheat Sheet. What country or city would you like to visit? With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll be able to talk about where you want to go and you'll master all the common words and phrases for sightseeing. Second, the Most Common Nouns PDF eBook. You'll master over 90 common nouns with this bonus PDF picture eBook. You can download and review on any device. Third, can you talk about hairstyles? Would you be able to get a haircut in your target language? If not, then this one minute lesson is just what you need. Fourth, phrases to use with your doctor. I have an appointment. I don't feel well. My throat hurts. You'll learn how to say these phrases and much more. Fifth, can you talk about books in your target language? Learn how to say novel, author, thriller, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to speak more of your target language, specificity and can-do checklists. Every learner wants to speak more in their target language, and yet speaking is almost always the weakest skill for most learners. So, how do you fix this? How do you speak more? Keep watching. These tips will apply to solo learners and those with a conversation partner. First, let's put language learning aside. Let's say you wanted to speak more about a certain topic in your native language. What would that depend on? The length of that conversation depends on how much you know about that topic, right? If you don't know much, that conversation won't last long. If you know a lot, you could go on for hours. It's the same with language learning. The more words and phrases you know around a certain topic, the more you can speak. It's a top-down approach. Pick a topic, for example, weather, and work your way down. Learn the relevant words, phrases, and questions for that topic. For example, what's the weather like? It's nice weather. It's sunny. It's windy. I like sunny weather. I don't like rain. The more lines you come up with, the more you'll be able to talk about the weather in your target language. The point is, if you want to speak more, you should start with a specific topic. Sounds obvious, right? So why don't most learners do this? Most learners don't do this because they're just passively following a learning resource without going after what they specifically want. It's much easier to follow a textbook than to stop, think about what you want to talk about, and go off in that direction. Of course, you should keep using your textbook or other existing resource. You can do both. Follow a resource and pursue specific topics. But here are a few reasons why this tactic is so powerful. First, specific goals always beat vague goals. For example, between setting goals like, I want to save money and I want to save $50, you're more likely to succeed with the $50 goal. But because you have a specific number to look for and measure, you won't stop until that $0 becomes $10, then $20, and then $50. Same with language learning. Between I want to learn more words and I want to learn 20 words, you'll do much better with the specific goal. Second, you get to speak more sooner. You can go try the general approach of learning the 2,000 most common words, but that will take a long time and it won't get you speaking any faster. But if you pick a specific topic and get all the words and phrases for it, you'll be much better off. Three, so you know what to focus on. Again, knowing what to focus on helps you learn and progress faster. Otherwise, if you're just going through a textbook with no specific goal in mind, you'll spend months on learning a language and never see any real progress. So remember, the more specific you are with what you want, the more likely you'll get it because you'll know exactly what you're looking for. 
This is why we tell you to set small, measurable, meaning specific, monthly goals. Now, what kind of topics should you pick? That depends on you and your hobbies and interests. You can also start with common topics, like talking about yourself, your family, the weather, or your weekend plans. But to make it easy for you, here's what you can do. One, download our free PDF conversation task list. Pick a topic to start with, for example, talking about your family. Then, take lessons inside our learning program based on that topic. You'll learn practical conversations that you can use in real life. And as a result, you'll be able to talk more about your family. Two, take five or 10 minutes and write out other lines that you'd want to use, either in that conversation or questions that someone may ask you, and get them translated with the help of our Premium Plus teacher. Three, come up with your own topics that are interesting to you. Then repeat step two. Come up with all the phrases, questions, and answers that could come up in that conversation. Write them out and get them translated with your Premium Plus teacher or translate them with a translation software. You could try this and it might not be perfect, but it could help you start and get you speaking a little bit more of your target language. The goal here is to be able to talk more about a specific topic and as a result, speak more of your target language. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about what's your real reason for learning a language? If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. If you're learning a new language, there will be times when you'll struggle with the lesson, when you won't fully understand what you've learned, when you'll be in a rut, or when you just won't feel like you're making any progress. And that's totally normal. In this video, you'll learn what to do if you're not learning and how to overcome language learning struggles. Let's begin. Number one, understand the mindset of a successful learner. Some learners are more successful than others. A key difference between successful learners and less successful learners is in the way they approach problems. Some learners rely completely on a learning program. If there's a grammar rule or word they don't understand, they get frustrated and blame the program. They don't look for solutions. Successful learners approach problems a little differently. If they encounter a problem, they look for a solution or ask for help instead of getting frustrated. You may feel frustrated at times, especially if you're a beginner, but how you choose to react will make all the difference. Number two, set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. Most learners fail because they set big, vague goals, like, I wanna be fluent. When they realize they have no idea how to do that, they lose motivation and quit. The solution to this? Set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. For example, Finish 10 audio lessons by the end of this week. Learn 20 words by the end of this week. Speak one minute of conversation by the end of this month. Listen to lessons for just five minutes a day, every day this month. Now your goals are small and realistic enough to accomplish. They're specific and measurable, so you know when you reach them and the deadline gives you a finish line. For example, either you learned all 20 words by Friday or you didn't. When you reach your goal, you gain a ton of confidence. This improves your chances of reaching your next goal because you've had experience reaching a goal and you understand the things you need to do to be successful. Number three, read along with the lesson notes and lesson transcripts. Now, what if you're doing a lesson but you can't catch a word? Take advantage of the lesson notes and lesson transcripts and read along with the lesson. The lesson notes give you in-depth grammar and vocabulary explanations that are not available in the lesson and the lesson notes give you the word-for-word -word transcript of everything said in the lesson. So if you want to pick up every word, read the transcript. Number four, review, because repetition is the mother of all learning. If you're struggling with a particular word, grammar rule, or lesson, be sure to repeat and review it a few times. And then come back a few days later and review it again. This same principle is used in our spaced repetition flashcards. The system quizzes you on words, then re-quizzes you in three days, then in six days, and so on, 
until the word gets embedded in your long-term memory. Some things you can do right now are, download the lesson and lesson notes, save the words to your word bank, or even write down the words or grammar rules, then come back to review them later. Number five, reach out to our teachers and ask questions. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can easily get in touch with your teacher and get all of your points of confusion cleared up. Or you can always leave a comment on our lessons and our teachers will get back to you. Remember, you're not alone. If you're struggling with a lesson, you can always get in touch with us. Number six, take a break and go do something else. Another thing you can do is take a break and do something else that doesn't require much thinking. There's a reason our best ideas come while in the shower or while taking a walk. While you're on a break, your brain is more relaxed and starts making connections that you couldn't see when you were focused and stressed out. It's also why coming back to review things with a fresh mind can help you better understand the lessons you've taken. Number seven, downgrade your learning routine. If you're studying for 30 minutes a day and find yourself overwhelmed, or if you suddenly find yourself busy, the best thing to do is to reduce your study routine to something easier and more manageable. If you've been learning 30 minutes a day, drop down to 10 or 15 minutes. Even five minutes is good enough because language learning success comes with consistency. Quitting and coming back every three months won't work. This brings us to our next point. Number eight, remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Think about it. You can't cram for five hours and expect to remember everything you've studied. So just like with a marathon, it's okay to go slow and at your own pace, even if you're learning for just five minutes a day. Similarly, if you're having trouble understanding a grammar point or a lesson, don't let it bring you down. Learning a language is a marathon, a long-term game. The little points of confusion you have now are just small obstacles and you'll fully understand them with time. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. Just click the link in the description. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher when I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what is la laïcité? La laïcité, in short, is the separation of state and religion. 
Another word for it is le secularisme or secularism. Every country has its own principles of secularism. In France, it's part of a long historic battle against religious influence on laws and government. The French secular state, or l'état laïc, doesn't promote any one religion or discourage any, as long as the beliefs and practices don't interfere with the state or with other citizens' rights. Because of its commitment to total separation of religion and state though, it means that overt religious activities and symbols are banned in public spheres. That includes public schools, public service offices, and public areas. This distinguishes it from other models of church-state separation, such as in the United States. In the US, the Constitution prohibits religious tests for government offices and the passage of laws that prevent people from exercising religion freely. The US Constitution, however, does not prohibit people, including members of government, from expressing religious sentiment in the public sphere. French laicity, however, makes a sharp distinction between public and private spheres and attempts to keep religious expression out of the public one. One area where this has caused controversy in recent years is the case of Muslim headscarves. These have been banned in some public contexts, such as schools, though some in the Muslim community consider it obligatory. Critics say that rather than promoting diversity, freedom of thought and opinion or multiculturalism, la laïcité is interfering with the right to basic religious self-expression. Some go further to argue that laïcité unfairly infringes upon the rights of those who practice minority religions. Public holidays, for example, continue to enshrine traditional Catholic values in public life by following the religion's liturgical calendar. Critics of laicity come from this traditional Christian perspective as well, arguing that the prohibition of religious sentiment from public life served to deny the positive contribution faith has made to the history and culture of France. So different populations of France are still at odds on what laicity is all about and whether the current laws are fair or not. That's it for this lesson. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. A bientôt, see you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some examples of the slang le verlan? If you talk to a French friend about common slang words, they'll probably ask you if you've heard of Verlan. Verlan is a variation of l'envers, which means the reverse. If you reverse the syllables of l'envers, you get Verlan. L'envers, Verlan, Verlan. Verlan is kind of like Pig Latin, if you've ever heard of that. A key difference is that people rarely speak in Pig Latin, whereas French people use Verlan all the time, but only certain words turn into Verlan. For example, one of the most common French interjections, ouf, comes from Verlan. It's actually fou reversed. Fou, ouf. Fou is an adjective that means crazy or mad. Oof means the same thing, except that you can use it on its own. Say someone asks you how your day was, and you've just had the craziest day. We've all had those. You might just respond, oof. Pretty useful, right? 
Another common word in Verlan is meuf, that comes from femme, which means woman. Meuf, though, is more casual. If a man says ma meuf, that means my woman or my girlfriend. If he says ma femme, that means my wife. Relou is another good one which comes from lourd or heavy. Relou is mostly used to describe a person who's a drag or someone that you don't want to be around. Some other Verlan words pretty much keep their meaning. Chamé comes from méchant or mean, but in Verlan it actually means awesome or amazing. Zarbi is bizarre or weird. Ripou is pourri or rotten. Chelou is louche or shady and weird. It can get a bit hard to follow, but it's pretty fun, right? To make things even more confusing, there's another variation of Verlan. It's Reverlan, a Verlan word reversed again. This is only happens to certain words though. Take flic, which is slang for policeman. Flic in Verlan became keuf. However, keuf was a slang word originally only used by thugs. However, it became a usual slang term, so they changed keuf into fuck. So keuf went through Reverlan and became fuck, which sounds like a certain word in English. I guess it reflects how some young people feel about les flics breaking up their parties. And that's it. In another lesson, we'll talk about curse words and their place in French culture. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. A bientôt. See you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, are the French really as snobby as they seem? This is a common stereotype, especially in the US, but it's actually more complex than it seems. A lot of Americans and other tourists think the French are stuck up because it seems like they refuse to make small talk especially in a foreign language. Actually, silence is socially acceptable in French culture and some other European countries, especially among strangers. In American culture, it's common for strangers to make small talk, but in France, it's a little less common, especially in foreign languages. But why? One reason is that being educated is really important in French culture and people are worried about making grammatical mistakes. Another reason is that many people remain close to a famous idiom, la vieille France, which means the old France. It is commonly used in conversation and is core part of the educational beliefs in France. French people are traditionally not used to talking to strangers and like to keep a distance. It's a part of the culture. Small talk can be seen as an intrusion into someone's private life. A final reason may be that French people are just really busy with their life and prefer listening to music or using their cell phones than talking to strangers. Although this may be the same in many other places, it is particularly prevalent in France. French people may also seem stuck up because of the social faux pas that foreigners make when they visit France. Here are some insider tips for French learners who may visit France in the future. Many tourists who visit France want to see famous sites. However, some may have not done research or really taken in the significance of these historical places. When a French person sees tourists traveling in big groups who stop at a site for 10 minutes, take a few pictures and then leave, they feel as if the tourists 
are not really appreciating the culture. Our advice is to do some research on the places you want to visit before you go. That way, you can show your respect not only to French people, but to their culture as well. Here's another thing to be careful of if you have been studying French. Garçon was a famous expression used to call waiters in French. It literally means boy, which is actually quite rude. In the US, there is still the impression that French speakers use the word garçon. If you use this word, the waiter might be really offended and not give you great customer service. Nowadays, French speakers simply get the attention of the staff with excusez-moi, excuse me, or simply s'il vous plaît, meaning please. So please use that instead when you are at the restaurant in France. So just because the French don't talk as much as foreigners expect them to, that doesn't mean they're rude or stuck up. That's it for this lesson. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. À bientôt. See you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what is le monde francophone? In a nutshell, le monde francophone is the French world, or all the parts of the world where French or some form of French is spoken. That's everything from other French-speaking countries in Europe, like Switzerland, Belgium and Luxembourg, to French West Africa, parts of Southeast Asia, the French Caribbean, parts of Northern South America, as well as Quebec and some other provinces in Canada. The main reason why French is so widely spoken across the globe is because of colonial history. Between the 17th and early 20th centuries, France and other European countries established colonies around the world. That doesn't mean that French sounds the same everywhere. Every place has its own dialects. For example, Haitian Creole is a language that's derived from French, but mixed with other languages. In West Africa, French pronunciation has a local accent. West African vocabulary, rhythms and tonalities have merged with European French and Français Populaire Africain, or FPA, but the sound of French is different in every French African country. There are also plenty of expressions normally used in other Francophone countries that don't exist in France. For example, ça fait deux jours, which literally means it's been two days, but in Burkina Faso, normally means it's been a long time since I've seen you. Just like language is deeply intertwined with culture though, Le Monde Francophone also goes a lot deeper than just a shared language. A lot of travel and cultural exchanges happen among Le Monde Francophone. A fun fact is that in an international competition like the World Cup, countries in Le Monde Francophone typically root for each other, as long as they're not playing against each other. It's a different kind of camaraderie that's really only found in Le Monde Francophone. That's it for now. Did I answer your question? If you have more questions, Please leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you use E and what are some common expressions? E is a pronoun that you can use to replace a noun. It makes your sentence shorter and easier to say or read. 
E usually replaces a location. However, there are a few different ways to use it. For places, E means there. Let's break it down with this sentence. J'ai mis mes clés sur la table, mais elles n'y sont plus. That means, I put my keys on the table, but they're not there anymore. That's easier than saying, I put my keys on the table, but they're not on the table anymore. In this case, the E in elles n'y sont plus refers to sur la table. You can also use E for geographical locations. Say someone asks, est-ce que tu vas à Paris cet été? Meaning, are you going to Paris this summer? You can respond with either, oui, j'y vais en août. Yes, I'm going there in August. Or non, je n'y vais pas, je vais à Londres. No, I'm not going there, I'm going to London. In the English translations, E becomes the word there replacing Paris. We also use E with certain verbs that use the preposition it. For example, let's take penser à, which means to think about. For the verb to think in English, you'd normally use the pronoun it. This is to refer to something you mentioned previously like I think about it. In French, we use I. So, I think about it is je vais y penser or je vais y réfléchir. And that's it. In another lesson, we'll talk more about verbs that use A versus verbs that use DE. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some French business expressions? Many French business expressions can also be used in casual settings. So it's good to know these standard phrases so you can communicate in both types of situations. In this lesson, we will go over some basic business expressions that you can use in French. Je m'excuse du retard, which means I am sorry for being late. It's a very useful phrase. You can use this for whatever reason. You can manage to be on time for a meeting or just come in late to the office. You can also say, désolé pour le retard, which means the same thing, but it's a little more casual. If you're asked to write a report and want to know when it's due, you can ask, quand dois-je rendre le rapport? Which literally means, when should I give the report? If you are a little busy at work and want to let your co-workers know, you can use this phrase, je suis en train d'organiser un rendez-vous. Être en train de means to be in the middle of something. So the example, je suis en train d'organiser un rendez-vous, means I'm in the middle of organizing a meeting. Se rendre compte is another great idiom to use in business. It literally means realize or be aware. Let's go over how to use it. For example, if your team has a lot of work to do, but you will be out of town the next week, you can say, rendez-vous compte que je suis en vacances la semaine prochaine, which means take into consideration that I'm on vacation next week. If your boss needs something urgently and you have just finished your work, you can use the phrase venir de, which literally means to come from. It's also an expression that means just now. If you want to say, I just finished my project, you can say, je viens de finir mon projet. When everything is finished, You can use the phrase, c'est un plaisir de collaborer avec vous, which means, it's a pleasure doing business with you. You can also use travailler, which means work, instead of collaborer. With travailler, the phrase would be, c'est un plaisir de travailler avec vous, which means, it's a pleasure working with you. 
And that's it. I hope these phrases can come in handy for you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments and I try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon. Rire. Laugh. Rire. Rire. Laugh. Le couple rit à une blague. The couple is laughing at a joke. Le couple rit à une blague. Délicieux. Delicious. Délicieux. Délicieux. Delicious. Dessert délicieux. Delicious desserts. Dessert délicieux. Eau. Water. Eau. Oh. Water. Puis-je avoir de l'eau, s'il vous plaît? Can I have some water, please? Puis-je avoir de l'eau, s'il vous plaît? T. 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 Tea. Tasse de thé. Cup of tea. Tasse de thé. Café. Coffee. Café. Café. Coffee. Café frais. Freshly brewed coffee. Café frais. Bière. Beer. Bière. Bière. Beer. Bière fraîche. Cold beer. Bière fraîche. Vin. Wine. Vin. Vin. Wine. Verre de vin. Glass of wine. Verre de vin. Bœuf. Beef. Bœuf. Bœuf. Beef. Steak de bœuf. Beef steak. Steak de bœuf. Poulet. Chicken. Poulet. Poulet. Chicken. Poulet rôti. Roast chicken. Poulet rôti. Porc. Pork. Porc. Porc. Pork. Le porc est la viande de cochon. Pork is meat from a pig. Le porc est de la viande de cochon. Rire. Laugh. Délicieux. Delicious. Oh. Water. 
Thé. Tea. Café. Coffee. Bière. Beer. Vin. Wine. Bœuf. Beef. Poulet. Chicken. Porc. Pork. Bonjour, je m'appelle Grégory Gauthier. Enchanté. Je viens de Paris. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to introduce yourself, including where you're from. First, let's look at some examples. Je m'appelle Hugues. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Karen. Enchanté. Let's practice. Vous rencontrez Grégory Gauthier pour la première fois. Présentez-vous et répondez à la question. Bonjour, je m'appelle Grégory Gauthier. Enchanté. Now share where you're from. Here are some examples. Je viens de New York. Je viens de Seattle. Je viens de Londres. Are you ready? D'où venez-vous? How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with your name and hometown, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. Je m'appelle Marc. Enchanté. Je viens de New York. Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you will review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you will review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Marcel, la fille devant est vraiment belle. Ah oui, elle est très belle. Elle est seule aussi. Oui, comme toi. Elle est belle, elle est seule. Et moi, je suis... Je suis amoureux. Tu es amoureux? Déjà? Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Fille. Girl. Daughter. Fille. Fille. Devant. In front. Ahead. Devant. Devant. Vraiment. Really. Vraiment. Vraiment. Être. To be. Être. Être. Très. Very. Très. Très. Beau. Belle. Beautiful. Handsome. Pretty. Beau. Belle. Beau, belle. 
seul. Alone, seul, single, lonely, only. Seul, seul, aussi. Two, also. Aussi, aussi. Comme, as, like. Comme, comme. Toi, you. Toi, et, and, et, et, déjà, already, déjà, déjà. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Marcel, la fille devant est vraiment belle. Ah oui, elle est très belle. Elle est seule aussi. Oui, comme toi. Elle est belle. Elle est seule. Et moi, je suis... Je suis... Amoureux. Tu es amoureux? Déjà? This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jacques. Bonjour, je m'appelle Mireille. Enchanté. Vous aimez le café Oui, j'aime beaucoup le café ici. Les biscuits aussi sont excellents. Moi, je mange souvent ici. J'habite près. Et vous, vous habitez Ah, je suis en retard. À bientôt. À bientôt, Mireille. À bientôt. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Enchanté. Nice to meet you. Please to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. Aimer. To like, to love. Aimer. Aimer. Beaucoup. A lot. Beaucoup. Beaucoup. Ici. Here. Ici. Ici. Souvent. Often. Souvent. Souvent. Manger. To eat. Manger. Manger. Habiter. To reside, to live. Habiter. Habiter. Près. Near, close. Près. Près. En retard. Late for something. En retard. En retard. À bientôt. See you soon. À bientôt. À bientôt. Biscuit. Cookie. Biscuit. Biscuit. Excellent. 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 Café. Coffee. Coffee shop. 
Café. Café. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jacques. Bonjour, je m'appelle Mireille. Enchanté. Vous aimez le café Oui, j'aime beaucoup le café ici. Les biscuits aussi sont excellents. Moi, je mange souvent ici. J'habite près. Et vous, vous habitez Ah, je suis en retard. À bientôt. À bientôt, Mireille. À bientôt. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what kind of movies do you like? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about movies and ask other people about their favorite kinds of movies. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Movies and TV PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime les films d'horreur. Once more with the English translation. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? What kind of movies do you like? J'aime les films d'horreur. I like horror movies. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What kind of movies do you like? That's... Quel genre de film aimez-vous? Listen to it again. Quel genre de film... Aimez-vous? Quel genre de film aimez-vous? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... J'aime le, la, les... Type of movie. I like type of movie. For example, I like horror movies. J'aime les films d'horreur. J'aime les films d'horreur. Here are a few more kinds of movies you can use with the same pattern to talk about movies. Horror movies. Film d'horreur. Film d'horreur. Comedy. Comédie. Comédie. Fantasy. Fantastique. Fantastique. Romantic comedy. Comédie romantique. Comédie romantique. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime les comédies. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime le fantastique. Quel genre de film aimez-vous J'aime les comédies romantiques. OK, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what kind of movies do you like? Quel genre de film aimez-vous? Imagine you like comedies. Do you remember how to say comedy? 
Comédie. Comédie. Say, I like comedies. J'aime les comédies. Now, answer the question saying that you like comedies. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime les comédies. Now imagine that you like fantasy movies. Do you remember how to say fantasy? Fantastique. Fantastique. Say, I like fantasy movies. J'aime le fantastique. Now, answer the question saying you like fantasy movies. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime le fantastique. Now, imagine that you like romantic comedy movies. Do you remember how to say romantic comedy? Comédie romantique. Comédie romantique. Say, I like romantic comedy movies. J'aime les comédies romantiques. Now answer the question saying you like romantic comedy movies. Quel genre de film aimez-vous? J'aime les comédies romantiques. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk about movies. You are now able to talk about types of movies like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell us what your favorite kind of movie is. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Okay, today's topic is four rules for staying motivated with language learning. You're going to learn one, the mistake people make with motivation, two, the four rules for motivation, and three, how you can apply the four rules to your language learning. Do you wish you were more motivated about language learning? You watch motivational videos, you feel good for a second, but none of it sticks. This lesson may have some tips to help you. First, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the 24-hour survival phrases cheat sheet. Traveling and want to learn a bit of the language? Then these survival phrases will help you with the first 24 hours. Second, the ultimate listening video master course. How good are your listening skills? Watch this free video master course to more easily understand native speakers. You can download it right now. Third, the 50 most common verbs all beginners must know. Do you know all of these verbs? If not, this lesson will drill the 50 most common verbs into your head. Just use the free audio slideshow tool inside. And fourth, 20 strategies for learning a language at home. Want to learn a language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson gives you all the best tactics for learning languages. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Four rules for staying motivated with language learning. Want to know how to really stay motivated? Then listen closely to these four rules. These rules might be a little different from the advice that you often hear. Ready? Rule number one, action comes first. Are you the type of person who prefers to make things happen? Or are you the type that waits for things to happen to you? One of the best ways to stay motivated with language learning is to not think about motivation. Instead, take action and start learning. The mistake that most people make is that they have this backwards. They think they should wait to feel motivated first and then start learning. But really, it's the other way around. First, you do a language lesson. You learn a basic conversation. Then you do another. And then you start feeling like you can do more and learn more. You see results. So results bring motivation. 
thinking about motivation does not bring motivation. Thinking about motivation is like reading an article about how to go outside for a run instead of actually going outside for a run. So action comes first. Rule number two, always have an outside influence. It's very easy to lose motivation if you're learning language alone. So what do you do? Here are some examples. You get a study buddy. You hire a tutor. You join a meetup group. You plan a trip to a country where people speak that language. Or you sign up for a proficiency test, like many language learners do. Why do this? Because now you have other people depending on you. You have outside factors that keep you going with the language. For example, if you signed up for a language proficiency test, you know you have a few months to study and you have to take the test on a certain date. Someone is going to pass or fail you. This is a lot more motivating than learning alone. If you're learning with our program, you can get your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll hold you accountable, send you homework, and give you feedback. If you have a study buddy, well, now you have someone that expects you to show up and improve. And if they're better than you, that should give you extra motivation because you want to be at their level. So get some outside influence. The next rule is rule number three. Always have a go-to study method. When you arrive at work or the gym or when you start your homework, you always have that one thing you do first, right? What do you do? For example, with work, maybe the very first thing you do is check emails. Then you check your tasks for the week. After that, you get started. Well, you need to make the same kind of habits with language learning. You need a go-to study method that you're comfortable with, an easy starting point. And this totally depends on you and your style. Choose something you enjoy. Some people listen to audio lessons. Some people like flashcards. For some people, writing is easy. You can write out song lyrics and translate them. It's up to you. The point is you should give yourself an easy first step to get you started and get into the flow of learning. If you're learning with our program, you can start with the word of the day email or do a quick three minute audio lesson. You can copy out the lesson dialogue, read through the lesson notes, or even easier, just review and re-listen to a lesson you took the day before. If you have your own go-to study method, you're already miles ahead of most learners. Leave a comment and tell us about it. And finally, rule number four, always be working on something. So here, I want you to stop and think about your friends. Do you have a friend that's always up to something? Some project? They're working on a song or they're making videos. They finish one thing and they start another. Well, if you wonder how they stay motivated, it's because they're always working on something. And this goes back to taking action. If you're not learning or working, you can't stay motivated. So you need to apply this to language learning. How? For example, like I mentioned in part two about outside influence, you can make a plan to travel to a country that speaks your target language, or you can sign up for a language proficiency test. If you do that, you'll have something to look forward to, something to do. If you're traveling, you need to learn travel phrases. If you have a proficiency test coming up, you have to study grammar and do exercises. What else can you do? If you already have a textbook or workbook, make it a goal to finish that book. If you have a learning program, make it a goal to finish it or reach a certain level. If you're using our lessons, make it a goal to finish one learning pathway. Then when you're done, give yourself something else to do, something to stick with, something to look forward to. So let's recap. One, action comes first. Two, always have an outside influence. Three, always have a go-to study method. And four, always be working on something. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to get a return on your language learning investment. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free French ebook before it's gone.